Express. Mayor, good morning to you. Good morning, Jimmy <laughs> Dale. <laughs> yeah, I've had enough of the North. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Silicon Mayor Jim Heigel, our guest this morning. And uh, happy Thanksgiving to you, sir. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you and all the listeners. It's a yeah. beautiful time of the year. All the trees and everything was so beautiful yesterday. Of course, the front came through and knocked a lot of the leaves off, but what a beautiful fall it's been. I uh, did note that uh, a company out of Birmingham, an organization, announced the uh, groundbreaking next week here in Sylacauga out near uh, uh, Walmart of the new Milo store. Talk about that a little bit. Well, Milo's and T-Mobile, as you saw there, we've had the prints down there at City Hall for some time now, and we're just waiting, you know. For uh, they, everything went through, the fire department looked at all that, which they do, and then the electrical and all that's been approved by the uh, code department, and we're just waiting for them to come and pick up the permits. Now, I understand it's going to be a, a walk-in and a, and a drive-through as well? As well, mm -hmm. yeah. and, It's uh, going to be a nice addition to us, another little bit of quality of life for our yeah. people to stay here. And, do you like yeah. Milo's burgers? I've eaten them before, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty good. You know, they test the market, don't they? they, they, they well, come they did. In, yeah. They were down here for yeah. several weekends for um, mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how many, but they came down to test the market. They saw the market was here. Yeah, it's something that people want and they need, and they'll do well. You see it. that quite often, don't you? Well, you do. You know, mm. some come in here. And, uh, there was one that came in here, tried it one time, but they only came back. You know, they put it in orders and brought the truck down here and gave them out. I think it was a uh, chip salad chip or something like yeah, that. You yeah. know, and we haven't heard any more from them lately. Yeah. But. yeah. Silicon Mayor Jim Heigel, our guest this morning, and it's an exciting time. We, we've talked about it all year long, and, and now then it's become uh, becoming more uh, uh, coming together, so to speak, uh, of a lot of different new businesses and new entities coming into Silicon. They are, and that's what's going to help our economy so much. People won't have to leave Silicon to do a lot of the shopping. All they're going to find it right here in Silicon. We're good, getting good grocery stores, good retail stores. And uh, like you say, you see the facelift of all the people who have these buildings and all redoing it. I was at IDB yesterday morning, they're talking about redoing the outside of their building. Of course, they'll seal it, you know, for moisture. <laughs> wow. And I said, that's great. They, you know, right down there in the corner of 3rd Street and, and Norton Avenue. And, and uh, I asked them, I said, you going to paint it white? <laughs> you know, they said, no, they're going to paint uh, use an off color, uh, grayish and all. They saw a couple of buildings that were Why red. is it so important, Mayor, that we put our best face forward well, in Silicon? people in. People come through here. I talked to a doctor yesterday, a pediatrician, and uh, they came in. They just love it. We, we've got what they want. Mm -hmm. We need more housing, though. We do. We need new housing. Need uh, uh, good, uh, good people. Don't want the big yards anymore. They want the smaller things. They want the garden apartments and everything mm -hmm. else. I know. I was doctor, uh, talking to Doctor Hillier when they had the in, inviting or uh, bringing the new teachers and all in. The other one coming back to school. Housing was an issue with them. We've got to find out ways to expand our housing in Sylacauga because a lot of these teachers, they had to go out of town and even up as far as them just to find a place to stay. A week from today is Black Friday. Mm -hmm. And it is said to be, if not the busiest, one of the most busiest shopping days of the year. And we want to encourage people as much as they possibly can yeah. to shop at home. That's right, shop at home. And what we, they're not going to shop at home unless we can provide them with the retail that they're looking great for. Great point. And the same thing, you know, open house was great. And Laura mm -hmm. reported on that. The merchants did beautiful. I mean, their income and all was great. And we're looking for the same thing for Black Friday. But uh, uh, speaking of uh, Laura, uh, of the Chamber of Commerce. You saw what beautiful job they did during the fall, you know, putting oh, out yeah. things there. And then, of course, uh, uh, the feral dogs of uh, Avondale won it with, with their display on the post. Well, they're going to do it again for Christmas. And uh, that's going to be great. You know, it's, it's just everybody's coming. So what, coming. we're decorating the polls for Christmas? Decorating the polls uh -huh. for Christmas. Uh, different individuals, you know, companies mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. Coosa Valley, different uh, uh, end of the stores and all are going to put up these Give, give them a pole, you know, and give them, and decorate it for Christmas. It's going to be great. It's something new and exciting, you know, for Silicon. If Santa Claus were sitting to your right this morning and he asked you the question, why should he smile on Silicon this year, what would you tell him? <laughs> I would tell him, Santa, I said, thank you for all you've given us. <laughs> I said, because of you and what you believe and what you stand for, you bring Zillicaga. You bring the, the love of the heart and everything, the people working together. No doubt about it. Uh, what, what about the, the uh, uh, 
planters and stuff like that that we're redoing here in town? Well, you see now uh, where they're putting vegetation into them now, you know, the, uh, the electrical, the engineers that, uh, like I told you before, you know, this electrical people who have to put these street lights and all in, they have to be certified by the state of Alabama. As you see now, these round things, that's your street lights. That's going in, they're getting ready to put and them in. And it's like molasses, you pouring syrup and how slow it pours, you yeah. know, it takes a it while. Takes time. Well, like I said, you know, the 1819 tap grant was downtown and behind the stores there. What that problem was, was having a certified electrician certified by the state of Alabama. Mm -hmm. Our local electricians do not do this because it's such a, it's, it's an expense first to get the license and go through the testing and all that. And there's not enough of held out uh, ju uh, work here in Silicaga to justify them to do it. So you have to get somebody who works statewide like this. I don't know how many vacant buildings and houses have been demolished or raised, taken down, uh, but that continues to go on here. It time. continues. We have some money left over and we'll continue to do some more. And that was another thing that was brought up, said housing in the neighborhoods are looking so much better uh, with these uh, eyesores out of yeah. the way. Yeah. And, but, and, and some of them have been there for, for a long time. Oh, they have. I mean, these things go back to the early 1900s, yeah. you know, a lot of them. I, some of them, uh, it's a shame that uh, some of them had to go, but uh, they had a little bit of nostalgia about them, you know, yeah. but, but they, ha they had to go. And, and it's been a long, drawn-out process with this Coach Kovic interfered with it, and it took us this long to get here. It took us about over, almost four years to get where we're at today. Silicon Mayor Jim Heigel, our guest this morning, and an interesting story that, that you may already know about. If not, I'm going to share it. Uh, it has to do with employment. Uh, you know, social media can be a good thing if Absolutely. it's used properly, okay, uh, but a business closed uh, and word got out it was a death in the family and, and, and whatever, and, and uh, long story short is that business, which is a restaurant, closed because of lack of employees for the day. That's something we continue to face, and I ask you the question, why? I wish I had the answer. I thought, you know, after the governor cut out the unemployment tax and did not receive that from the federal government, the federal government was supposed to cut back on it too. But employee, I mean, we're hurting for employees in the city. So uh, what does that officers. mean? What does that mean to uh, businesses right here at the make or break point it, of the holidays? It hurts. It actually hurts, you know. We've seen it before, you know, just hopefully, you know, being close to Christmas, you think more people want yeah, to get to work and yeah. have money for Christmas, you know, and hopefully that's going to pick up mm -hmm. a little bit. But yes, the unemployment is still an issue, but uh, uh, it's a little bit better than it has been in the yeah. past. But it is very important to our merchants and our retailers, people there, you know, because you see it outside, employees needed, employees needed. We increased our salaries and everything else and our benefits for our city employees to encourage them to come to work for the city. and. Uh, we were able to pick up a few. We got a police officer, and one officer has already left us. He got married and moved off, and <laughs> now we got to fill that vacancy, you know. And it's just a uphill battle all the way. Yeah, and, and while we're speaking of, of uh, uh, employees of the city, uh, you know, Kelly Johnson's wife uh, had surgery yesterday. Yeah. And I'm saying she's doing okay. She's doing fine, you know. She had that valve replaced, yeah. and she, that was a battle for her. Yeah. And he had the COVID with him, you know, and then she had the. Uh, the pacemaker issue, and then now she went, went with the, uh, the mechanical valve for the heart. She was had a pig valve to begin with, and it didn't last all that long. So. Yeah, so big much in prayer for Misty. She's doing well and recovering yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, 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 as we continue with Silicaga Mayor uh, Jim Heigel for a few more minutes, uh, not all is hunky dory. Uh, not all is sugar and spice and everything nice. nice. <laughs> we continue to uh, face issues in our city, decisions being made, and council met and approved some items a few days ago on the pool and the Civic Center. Talk about that a little bit. Well, what it was about the pool and Civic Center, it's a uh, plan that the president uh, of the council brought to the council to uh, bring uh, Chambers King out of Montgomery uh, into Silicago and hire them, I think it was a hundred and Four grand or something like that. And yeah. It's almost the hundred fifty thousand dollars and plus nine thousand dollars for other things to come in and see what we needed. 
not to go ahead and build the thing, but uh, to lay the groundwork, talk to the people, what do we need in the city of Sylacauga for the future growth, to take care of our parks and our swimming pool, put an indoor pool, which is coming. And uh, it was a three to two vote. And uh, it, uh, uh, right now the council is split on this idea. You know, they wanted to go out and look at other people. Chambers King came to us from the past uh, city clerk years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in one of our Alabama um, magazines, and so with the beautiful job they did down there in the, the, the river walk and all that down in South Alabama and Montgomery, and uh, we talked to them, and they do, do, they do good work, there's no doubt about that. But the, we're concerned about what our local people, we got some people here, can they do that same job? And that's all the, the other two were asking, mm -hmm. you know, can they do it, you know? Uh, Let's be, we're trying to keep things in-house. I'm trying to, to say this. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, I talk to a whole lot more people, and I'm not a know-all by any stretch of the imagination. No, not either. <laughs> and, and, but I talk to a lot of people, Mayor. Yeah. And very few of those people that I talk to are for this project. Why are we going on with this project if Seemingly, I may be wrong, seemingly the majority of the people, by a vast majority, don't want it. They don't. I get hit with it every day. I got hit with it yesterday when it first came out. I got two calls, you know, and, and asked me what I was going to do about it, you know. And, uh, but well, what the, are you going to do about it, mate? <laughs> <laughs> well, the decision hasn't been completely made, but I got 10 days to make my mind up. But anyway, it's like anything else, you know. They got something project here. Some people can go out here and sell uh, clogs to an Eskimo, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, but it's uh, do we really need it? Do we need to go this far th at this time? My main interest is in the infrastructure. We got looking at probably about 2.1 million dollars in infrastructure, paving and everything. That's my main interest, bringing our city up and keeping people here in Silicon. Well, what about the will of the people, Mayor? Well, apparently they're not being listened to. Hmm. Well, two of them are <laughs> anyway. But uh, uh, so. You need to take things into consideration. Maybe I'm missing something. I, I, well, I don't want to get into this yeah, too deep. You know, right. it's a matter of opinion. And, and the, somebody is uh, politics, you know, and say, well, this is what we need. This is the way it is, you know. And they think that's the only way to go, you know. But other people are saying, hey, listen, this is Sylacauga. This is not uh, Birmingham or Montgomery or Washington, D.C. This is Sylacauga. So, and the bad thing about when I get hit with the swimming pool, shutting it down, a big quality of life was taken away from our people, mm -hmm. all the way from toddlers all the way up to people 60, 70, 80 years old who use that pool. You look at it. me every time when you say 80 years old. <laughs> well, it's just a habit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you're still 49. Yeah, <laughs> right, anyway. right, right. But uh, that quality of life was taken away from them, and they remember that. Why didn't they go ahead and take the time and give us the information that we really need to keep the pool going just for the summer months while you were doing this over here. They say, well, it costs $2 million to do it. And the other one said, well, it's gonna cost $4 million. I asked for information, which I did not get, and it didn't, didn't come to near that much. It came to less than 200,000, that was two years ago, probably 250,000 today, you know, with the economy the way it is, to bring that pool back up. But there's, I have no documentation to show me that all this stuff was true. And of course, I signed the paper and said that the pool was uh, unserviceable, mm -hmm. according to the information I had. And then I got some other information, and, and I questioned it, you know, but anyway. Well, all right, so here we are uh, mid-November, and certainly going to be colder sooner than later, but it'll be spring coming. Uh, sure and and we, yeah. we, we also have the splash pad, and yeah. all of a sudden it's seemingly gotten quiet on the splash pad. Well, it has. Well, ED&T Engineering is still looking at that. They're looking at demoing that, and, and there's a, uh, they also asked to look at the cleaning up of the, uh, uh, the school that burnt, you know, the Sylvan School. And, mm -hmm. But uh, like one of the councilmen said, you got a, a waiting pool there. You can put the splash pad right there. The kids probably enjoy the splash pad on the waiting pool rather than more than the waiting pool, you know. But mm -hmm. it's, people got other ideas, but uh, you got three councilmen, that's pretty well set, you know.
I, 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 and I they do. They got control of the monies and all the properties of the cities and everything else. Like I say, I've got to go to them to get monies to operate the city on, you know. You hear all kind of numbers floating around about a final cost to a project like not just the pool, but the Civic Center, oh, it, yeah. it, it's in the millions of dollars. Sure it is, it's 12, 15, 20 million. I mean, you're not even taking into consideration the upkeep of it. That's one of our biggest problems. We haven't been maintaining what we have. And uh, yes, we need an uh, indoor pool. I'm all for it and everything yeah. else. But it's not the what you want, but how are we gonna get there? It's like somebody else, it's people, it's not what you do, it's the way you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And I've had this discussion, you know, people before, you know, but, so we, but it, we need to listen to everybody. We, we're seemingly, uh -huh. now you can correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, I've been wrong more times in life than I've been right, uh, obviously, <laughs> uh, but it seems that we're going the direction of the main avenue project. Is that an accurate statement? Uh, somewhat. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know exactly how to fit these two together. All right, when uh, is that property going to be demolished? Any idea? Well, we have no idea. Okay. Uh, right now, um, ADMT was given ten thousand dollars to look at to see if the uh, food were. I guess you're talking food world building. Ten thousand dollars to see if it was suitable for a community center. <laughs> that was a, that was a given. It's not. And then there was another uh, seventeen thousand given to them to uh, engineer how to tear it down. And then there was another sixty-four thousand given to them to draw out a plan for a new community center which included a walking track, pool, mm -hmm. basketball court, mm -hmm. and this, like that. And then uh, now they were asked to go out and see, get bids on what it would cost to tear it down. And uh, that's where it stands right now. We're all getting all that money to do that. Well, the council says to pay them, so when, when that checks come through, I pay them, because they approve it. <laughs> well, since you were doling out that money, could it's Christmas time, I could use well, a little of that too, you know. Well, I know we could all could use it. <laughs> but like I say, it's not, we know what we need and what right. we want, you know, but what's the way we're going about it? Is this the time of year the economy is up and everything else? They talk about taxes. The tax is already up for the city because you got that with inflation. Things go up in price, mm -hmm. taxes go up in price. And, and the same thing, you know, um, you raise taxes at a time like this, you know, it'd be kind of difficult to pay for all these projects. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have to wait until after this administration or, or this economy starts leveling back off again because they're talking about now that we're back in um, inflation is terrible yes yeah, it's, it's eating us alive and it, interest rates are haven't gotten that high so far but that's a good thing and we got the good people out there who can handle our bonds and everything mm -hmm. else is good because that's already signed off on them years ago and and uh, that's not a problem it's just that how are we spending this money I, I had uh, a city councilman uh, as a guest and, and I asked the question point blank will we have a swimming pool this summer and I was told yes I don't see how that can happen I can't either okay. uh, but that's the decision of the council you know I try and do my part and due diligence right. and what I have to do to I, I mean, it's that, admirable that you can yeah, say that yeah. and wish that, but I don't see how it can happen right well, now. I don't either. And there, under the Alabama State Constitution, I've got certain rights I'm looking at now. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 I'll be using my authority under the Constitution to do what I feel like is necessary. Because I've got to look after the people. They're the ones who put me in here. No, the councilman didn't do it. These people, right, I've got to go. For. What's on the table for Silicaga uh, 2022 uh, with moving forward? outside of what we've talked about so far? Well, nothing really, you know, it's just what you're, you're mentioning now, you know, is what's coming on. Uh, what we are doing, uh, we're getting uh, a trip to, uh, which is 100% um, money from uh, LDOT to uh, put it widen 21 North a little bit and mm -hmm. make turning lanes in there going to mm -hmm. the Fairmont and also to the fire station. Uh, we do have a gas line in there, the eight inch uh, pressurized gas line in there is going to have to be moved, but I think that will come under the to expedite this thing in good faith with the state, the council was asked to provide 5% of the 100% to show them good, uh, that, that, that's how important it was to us to have it done. Mm -hmm. We looked at uh, Lake Howard a couple weeks ago, went out there and looked at the road to get the road, to bring it up from a 15 ton bridge, get it up, we're gonna have to be about 40 ton. And to put that in there, that's That is going, a beautiful facility out there is, that, that but, but nobody knows a whole lot about, you know? <laughs> Well, you can't hardly get there because yeah. the road's so bad and everything else. 
But that's going to be uh, about a $4 million project. Wow. Because you're looking at building a new road and crossing two creeks, and it can be done, but that's a big cost item. Mm. And things like that, you know, it's a, uh, thank God we got the uh, Lake Howard Authority. That was another thing that was in pretty bad shape until we got the authority together, and now she's a beautiful place out there. Talk about the light on as you turn into James Payton. Is that something that'll happen this next year, you think? Uh, I don't know if it's going to happen this year because it's too late in the year. For uh, 20, but, 20, yeah, 2022. But we do have EEF and S Engineering who did all our paving, and God bless them, they came in uh, under the they time did it, limit. They? Oh, they, uh, under the time limit yeah. and uh, under budget. Yeah. Uh, they've been great for the city. I mean, they're saving money and saving us time, but they're the ones looking at that mm -hmm. light now. Mm -hmm. And the, the striping all been laid out for the light as well. Yeah. Uh, Silicon continues to grow, uh, new businesses on the horizon, and uh, I don't know if we can talk about this or not, and I'm, I'm okay either way uh, before we go this morning, uh, about other businesses that are coming in uh, to that 280 corridor. Uh, can you talk about any other businesses coming in? Well, there's one, yeah. There's uh, a nice one's going to be coming in over there, at, uh, pretty close to Coosa Street across from uh, Pinecrest Park. Uh, You've seen what the big lots have done with theirs, their expansion out there. And then you got a new furniture store there, which came yeah. in. It's a, and uh, a new buildings uh, will be down there in the Hutton project over there uh, next to TJ Maxx. That, mm -hmm. That's still on the table. Uh, we know about these things, but they're not going to happen overnight. They, they got uh, things they have to do under the state law, federal law, and, and other things. And, and they got to get deeds to properties. and. So the grocery you know, store is coming. It's coming. Okay. You'll see that okay. next year. I was hoping that they might be yeah. on break ground this yeah. year, as I mentioned several months ago, but it, it didn't happen. Yeah. There were some issues there uh, that they had to look at, and they had contractors, I think, that went bankrupt, and they had yeah. to step back a little bit, and, but they're moving forward. All right, uh, before we go, a beautiful Pinecrest Park with veterans down there. Wow. Oh. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think uh, it was uh, such a great honor to welcome our governor back to uh, the Silicon Valley had the opportunity that's about the third time mm -hmm. and she was great to asset to the veterans when i was in the, the american legion and, and our midwinter conference in montgomery she's always there to greet us and all she had to love for there and of course the, the great program at the stadium and uh with our congressman mike rogers of course mike i serve on his veterans yeah. advisory committee for talladega county and and, and that's a beautiful program there. With the, I think this is the best year we've ever had for the recognition of the veterans. And finally, what about those B.B. Comer Tigers? Great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that is something they play tonight, don't they? They do. Yeah, they do. Seven o'clock, uh -huh. uh, quarterfinals yeah. of 2A, and uh, uh, historical season for B.B. Comer. And as mayor, I know you want to wish all the Tiger fans. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I support them 101%. Uh, there you yes, go. sir. Uh, speaking of uh, the county, Dr. Susan Lacey, she was recognized, you know, as the national uh, uh, superintendent, uh, county superintendent of the year, you know, and they had a nice reception for her up there at Winterboro last yep. week. And we thank her so She's much. She's a great one. Oh, she is a beautiful person. She's doing a wonderful job. Yeah. And we want to work with them as much as we possibly can, you know. You, and we talked at the top of the show, and we've got to go, before we talk at the top of the show about beautiful Sylacauga, well, you got a... Clark County football team and their supporters is traveling over 200 miles. They're coming into Silicon and they're going to see what we have. That's right. And who are they going to bring with them? Mm -hmm. Their families are coming there you go. They're going to see it. They're going to love Silicon. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to keep our outward, keep our best foot forward. All right. Happy Everything. Thanksgiving, Mayor. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your listeners and, and TV land. God bless. We've, this nation has been blessed beyond our recognition, but we need to thank God for everything we've got. Silicon Mayor Jim Heigel, our guest. Final break. Back with closing thoughts right after this. Hmm.